Hi, everyone. Um, so my paper is going to be about geomo, uh, geothermal energy in the context of the United States. Um, some background as to why I decided to go to this topic. Um, the fact that the Earth can provide power for us is really cool, in my opinion. Um, I just You hear a lot about it in the context of like Iceland, and I was wondering why the U.S. isn't doing more of it. Um, and it turns out that there are actually quite a few big issues um, for geothermal. It simply isn't feasible everywhere. Um, it really does rely on the like geological makeup of a place, and that's just not the case um, throughout the United States. Um, I wanted to put this paper in the context of scarcity and backstop. Um, currently, about 90% of our energy comes from non-renewable resources. Um, geothermal only accounts for 0.22%. Um, but at a certain point, um, oil, coal, and natural gas um, will reach a backstop price. And at this point, we can use geo and geothermal energy as um, a backstop for all three because it can be used to heat and cool and it can also be used to reduce electricity. Um, however, it's more likely to be substituted for coal and natural gas. Um, when this happens, firms and consumers will opt for a different source of energy, which can include any renewable, but in this case would be geothermal. Um, However, it, there is the possibility that geothermal, like oil and gas are going to have to become super expensive in cer certain places, um, places that don't really have like the geological features for it. Um, whereas in places like California and Hawaii and Alaska and a couple other Western states, it will become, more, it's more likely to become a feasible backstop just because, you know, those places have these um, geysers and geological features. Um, the current situation with geothermal in the United States, um, the U.S. currently is actually the highest geothermal power operating, has the highest geothermal operating capacity by country. We currently produce 3,567 megawatts, and there's an additional about 1,200 megawatts um, in future projects that are about to be tapped. Um, some of the problems of geothermal um, energy currently, one, there's some pretty high techno um, technology costs, um, there's also problems with research and development. There's not a whole lot of funding towards that right now. Obviously, location. Um, it can be really hard to transmit geothermal energy um, across like long distances. Um, and there's a certain level of environmental and production risk. Um, it's kind of an unknown source. It really hasn't been researched a whole lot. Um, and that's always a risk for investors. Um, however, according to the US Department of Energy, at the geysers, which is the largest geothermal power plant in the world, um, it's actually located in Northern California, power is sold at between $0.03 cents and um, $0.3.5 cents per kilowatt hours. Um, a power plant built today would require about um, $0.05 cents per kilowatt hours um, to build and like maintain. Um, and some plants can charge more during peak demand periods. And for context, According to Forbes, onshore wind schemes are now cast, costing an average of six cents per kilowatt hour. Um, some can be as low as four. Um, solar PV is about 10 cents, um, whereas fossil fuels could fall in the range of between five cents and 17 cents by 2020. Um, however, this figure excludes the locality of geothermal. Um, geothermal is currently feasible in California, Hawaii, Alaska, Oregon, Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico. Um, so kind of in grand conclusion, geothermal is much likely to be more back, more likely to be a backstop in these places. Um, what can make geothermically more economically feasible? Um, there's a study done by MIT that actually um, suggests some really positive things about the future of geothermal. Um, one, it's a resource that's right at home. Um, with increased research and development, MIT this paper suspects that it'll kind of put geothermal energy over the hump, so to say. Um, can provide continuous baseload power with minimal environmental impacts. Um, although there is, um, there, I'll talk about Yellowstone a little bit, but Yellowstone seems to be this untapped potential. Um, there's a lot of places, like it has geological features for this energy source. Um, but the park is off limits to development. Um, but the opportunity costs are huge, actually. So outside experts agree that um, Yellowstone hosts enough geothermal to power the entire country. But according to the 1970 Geothermal Act, Yellowstone is specifically off limits for the energy source. Um, and going back to the environmental issues, um, water 
with this type of energy, water can be re-injected back into geysers, and there's concern that this would damage the Yellowstone geysers, which kind of addresses the environmental um, externalities. Uh, you know, it's it's damaging these geysers, which can be, you know, it's a, a form of tourism. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to look at geothermal. I might look at um, Yellowstone in my paper a little bit more, but for now, I just want to kind of get an overall sense of, you know, what's the, what are the current capacities and what does the future of the energy source look like.